Hello everybody, Twitch Nitro here, and my oh my, has it been a while since I did a video. And it's been even longer since I did a, uh, a survival redstone tutorial video. Oh my. So I decided to take a, a little bit of, uh, of a break from video recording and whatnot. Um, it wasn't something I decided on, obviously, because I would have done a video telling you guys that I was going to take a break. It was just something that ended up happening. I've been working on a, a lot of sort of personal issues that I have, and um, a lot of them are still around, but I figured that I enjoy making videos, so I will. In the downtime, I've been building uh, a new type of uh, survival uh, farm, because I played a little bit of a survival before stopping recording and whatnot, and I really wanted to sort of make this. It was suggested by somebody. But I'm not going to talk about that in this video. Instead, I'm going to talk about something I made while I was trying to make the farm. I needed a counter, so we've all seen dropper counters and hopper counters and such, but I couldn't find one with a fast reset. Uh, I wanted a near instant reset, and what I mean by that is, is in a standard hopper dropper sort of situation, when you have two uh, droppers uh, or dispensers facing into, into each other, you have a number of things in this, and they'll slowly make their way every time you get a redstone signal to the circuit. They'll make their way from one dispenser or one dropper into the other dropper. And I couldn't find one which, once it had moved all the items from one to the other, and it activated, and it had successfully counted up to the number where it triggers, um, I couldn't find one where it just dumps everything from one into the other really quickly. Uh, most of them very slowly sort of refill up, you know, You and so if you wanted to start counting with the same counter uh, almost immediately after sending out a redstone pulse, it was, it, it, there, there isn't really one out there. I had to look around for ages and couldn't really find any conclusive ones, so I ended up just making one myself. And it's actually incredibly simple. I've come up with three different sort of layouts for it here. They all work in the exact same way and use pretty much the same resources. They just have different uh, fingerprints or, or what have you. They have different sizes so you can fit them into uh, small spaces or however much space you have in your survival world. Uh, depends on what you're obviously using the counters for. So for this example I have uh, five um, polished andesite just counting. So this will count up to five and then it will output. Uh, you can take the output away from it however. So let's let's go over here. I have the input going into here. And it's very important that the redstone input directly goes into one of these things. So you can't have a block next to it and then redstone going into that block like this. It needs to go directly into the into the dropper. Both droppers have to be powered for this system to to work. So what will happen here is if I if I pull this lever four times, one, two, three, four, it will quickly it will send a quick pulse out of the system and it will light up to say that four uh, I four inputs have been registered by it. Um, now obviously in other designs, let's say you have like every single piece of this is full, you would have to wait for every single item to go back to the single dropper it's sort of registering. But in this, what happens is this redstone block moves to the other side and locks this other dropper. So now instead of detecting the dropper that the stuff was first in, the detection is based on this second dropper. So it sort of moves to the overflow dropper. And then if we have four more ticks... And so if we continue to just very slowly put in inputs, every four inputs, it will output, uh, it will output one. So let's have a look at the model. Um, everything that you see here is necessary for the model to work. So this is a, uh, this is this version over here. We have two comparators, uh, not on subtraction or anything like that coming out of each of the droppers because we want to detect when items are in each of them. They in turn go into these 
uh, redstone torches, which go up a sort of mini torch tower and come up out here. What these torches do is when there's items in this hopper, it will power this sticky piston. And when uh, there are things in this hopper, it will power this sticky piston. But obviously, because these pistons are pushing this redstone block between each other, when there's stuff in both, it won't move. It won't move it. And what this redstone block is actually doing is it is locking the dropper diagonal to it. It's like a sort of bud thing. Uh, because the dropper thinks that it's being powered, when it receives a redstone signal, it can't move any of the objects in here. Because without this, obviously, what would be happening is when I power it, it would push one item into here and one item from here into here. And that wouldn't, that wouldn't exactly work. We wouldn't be able to detect any change. Uh, these activator rails, they don't have to be activator rails, they can be uh, powered rails or what have you. These are here to sort of um, update the droppers so they know when they've, they've actually got an update. So let's just have it without them. So there's one in here and one in here. So let's uh, remove all of them from this. Wait a minute, let's see. Okay, so if we put, uh, uh, apply power one more time, it's going to move one from here into here. Okay, and it's done that. But now let's apply one more power. Ah. Oh, I tell you what, it's actually... Um, they've changed kind of the workings behind this. This might actually work now because I've made this just before sort of uh, the 1.8... I made this before the 1.86. I know that they changed some dropper mechanics, so maybe this works now without the activator rails. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I I still have them here. Gonna have to test uh, after the video uh, whether or not you actually need them or not. I might put that in the description. So taking an output from the system. Uh, with this design here, I basically put redstone along both of these, so you can have one of these powered, both of them powered, or none of them powered. Uh, when none of them are powered, it's because uh, this is sort of moving between them, uh, and so this will come down. So let's let's just do that. So this will unpower both of these, and that means that both of these droppers have items in. If we power it again. Uh, they move from one to the other again, and when one of these empties, it'll cause one of these torches to turn on, which will, of course, output, uh, turn this output to st uh, a strong output, and this will uh, mono stable here, allowing you to get that, that flash. You can do a sort of same thing here between all of them. In this one, what you can do is quite m is a little bit more simple. You just need to run redstone. And that redstone will flash uh, if you keep an eye on the um, the top left corner of the video. Actually, that was a, probably a, a bad time to do it. But what will happen is because this redstone will move, it will turn off and then turn back on because the redstone is sort of in transit here. And over here, you can do something similar to the to the, the other one there, although it's a little bit different. So this, this design's probably not as user-friendly for outputs. This design's very user-friendly for outputs, because you can even like do that to it and put a repeater here if you need it. And uh, this one's quite user-friendly, but you have to build in the um you have to build in the mono stable circuit. So yep, it's a very simple, uh, very concise sort of uh, build. It'll count whatever you need and it'll reset instantly between them. Uh, so if you have hundreds, if you needed to count for whatever purpose, hundreds and hundreds of items, but it's, let's say, it's a constant stream of stuff going through the counter, you might want to have, like, if it's going quite quickly, or not that quickly, it can't switch that quickly, but if it's, let's say, a constant stream of mobs or whatever, and you want to count how many mobs are going through a system, like a like a mob sorter or what have you, uh, this is definitely, can definitely do that, and it can keep up with... Uh, quite a lot of flow rate because it switches very quickly. Alright, so that's the end of this video. Uh, just p before I finish off and I say my goodbyes, uh, there will be another video coming later in the week that will be me going over a new uh, 
a new mob farm for survival. Uh, so keep an eye out on the channel for that, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.